I, I asked some people, don't they realize it's happy hour? I mean, it's, it's like almost five o'clock, right? Um, well, I'm Brad. I know you've probably had a really long day or a couple of days. And so I'm going to shoot you through some information relating to the Parks Online Resources for Teachers and Students program. It's California State Park program. I'm here on behalf of California State Parks. I've worked for California State Parks for about 12 years now. I've done everything, uh, you know, in the system from collecting fees at campgrounds to cleaning restrooms and doing programs in campfire centers and uh, doing some planning for visitor centers. And about seven years ago, um, I landed with this program, which was being launched at the time. Um, as a way to engage K-12 audiences uh, with California State Parks resources um, and to use technology to do that. So um, that's what I'm going to tell you about today. Um, so I'm going to refer to ports quite a bit and uh, ports is Parks Online Resources for Teachers and Students. What it is is it's a distance learning program uh, that uh, we do live interactive video conferences from state parks. Basically I'm, we're the content provider. So. I know you guys have a lot of experience with online learning and, and different, uh, different resources that are out there. We're basically just one resource, um, you know, in the content provider realm. Uh, we consider ourselves really, really good. Uh, we do about 50,000 students a year. We do one class period at a time. And I'm going to tell you how that happens as we go through the discussion today. If you have any questions at all or if I'm not making any sense to you, please raise your hand. I'd like this to be an interactive discussion and uh, I want to give you what you need out of this, this discussion as well today. So, um, like I said, about seven years ago, uh, this program was born out of a need for California State Parks to engage with K-12 community, K-12 students. We realized that less and less students were taking field trips to, to state parks. Um, I do probably close to 20, 25 professional developments with teachers every school year. And there's about three of us that do the same thing around the state. And we always ask teachers, how many of you are taking your students to a state park? And you know, inevitably it's maybe one or two and it's that one or two that's having the bake sale and it's the ones that are really doing what they can to get their students into state parks. So this program was born out of, out of that need to, to uh, engage students. It's not meant to replace field trips. We still want teachers to take field trips into parks. Uh, we like to say you can't replace what doesn't exist. For those 24 teachers, they're not visiting state parks, so this is a good way to get them engaged. Um, we often like to tell people early in our presentations, this is a completely free program. Uh, we don't charge anything for the program. We don't have any uh, plans to charge for any of our programs. And in fact, we work very hard to get um, the school, school districts, teachers set up with the equipment that they need to participate as well. So, and I can tell you a little bit about that as we go on. Um, all of our information pretty much travels over K-12 High Speed Network here in California. So uh, we've got, you know, a great uh, amount of bandwidth going to and from our sites. Um, and really what we're trying to do is teach an academic content standard in that classroom in the context of the state park. So um, in the example of Anyunuevo Island, it's this island. Anybody know where Anyunuevo is? Yeah, off the coast. Basically Half Moon Bay between Santa Cruz and San Francisco, a quarter of a mile out to sea. There's this island there. And uh, it's a, one of the last places where elephant seals come up to breed. They come up in January and February to, to, to fight and mate, right? So we figured what a better place to stick a camera, shoot it back to a green screen studio, and show seventh grade students the sex and violence of Anguilla Island, <laughs> right? Hey, okay. it's very relevant. Uh, but basically what we can do is we can tell the story of evolution of the elephant seals and all of the evolutionary problems that they've had with genetic bottleneck and, and decreases in population through the story of the elephant seals on Nanyang Wave Island. So it's kind of what we do. Um, why do we do it? Like I mentioned, less and less students come into parks, um, less and less rangers out there and interpreters, which we, what we call our educators, to go out into classrooms as well. So again, this is just a way to engage with uh, parks. So there's two components to our program. We have everything a teacher needs is found online on our website. 
ports.parks.ca.gov, where we write a unit of study for that particular park site. Now there's, there's over 270 different state parks. Not every one of them does this program. There are eight different state parks. And if you go to our website, you can see all the eight different ones that uh, offer the program. And I'll pretty much go through all of them today. So uh, the units of study are found online. In this case, we're looking at a picture of our unit of study for the exploring weather from Baldwin Hill Scenic Overlook. It's a park in the Los Angeles area in Culver City. Um, where we just developed a, a ports program there, built a distance learning studio, a mobile uh, video conferencing vehicle, and uh, we found that it was a really good place to observe weather. So this is the, the unit of study that we, we chose for, for this. Um, so basically we take the students on, on observations of weather throughout the park from the park. So the units of study prepare them, of course, for the live video conference, the, the, the big deal, right? So, um, are there any questions up to this point? All right. So we do things two ways. Uh, we do things with uh, Chroma Key Studios. So this is John. He's our interpreter, one of our interpreters up in, uh, in Santa Cruz, where we pushed that camera, that high def video conference camera that's on Anginuevo Island, back to this old maintenance garage, basically, in Seacliff, which is where the cement ship is, if you've ever been to Santa Cruz. Uh, and we can pipe that image of anything pretty much behind John. This is standard technology now, right? Your, your kids are using it with their, their Macs, the TV personalities are using it, CGI, all the stuff that, that you see on TV. This is, this is really our basic mode of, of operation for our live uh, distance learning stu programs from our studios. So we have uh, four different uh, sites around the state. We have uh, one in Anza Borrego Desert. We have uh, one in uh, Anginuevo or Santa Cruz, uh, one in North Coast Redwoods, and one in Columbia State Historic Park in the foothills of the Sierras. And again, we can take the students uh, on any adventure in that park pretty much, you know, any time. Uh, we often get, well, don't you do it live in the park? Well, we do. But if you've ever been to Anza Borrego, that's east of here in San Diego, it's going to get hot starting now. It's about 100 degrees starting next week, right? It's going to be really hot. So you can't take your student, we can't take uh, equipment and go out into the field all the time. So we have a basis of operation in Anza Borrego that is our distance learning studio. But we do also go outside into the park. So we have the ability, um, we've been playing around with uh, different technologies to basically build wireless mesh networks within our parks so that we can deliver programs from the environment. And so um, the newest one we have is uh, at Baldwin Hills. So this is a picture of Jen and she's with our little battery powered uh, golf cart, We've got a little wireless mesh network antenna on top of there, and inside the box is a high def TV, high def video conferencing machine, uh, an iPad, document camera, all the stuff that she can, she can, she needs to deliver a live interactive video conference from that park. And what we're doing here is we're we're basically telling them about weather and climate. And so what you're seeing behind her is all of those influences on weather and climate. You've got mountains, you've got the ocean to the west, you've got uh, you know, uh, urban development, which influences weather and climate, all of these things so we can tell that story. And then we'll supplement her story with things from the iPad so we can show a video clip or images or what it looks like when it's raining at the park. So we can do all of those things as well. Um, this is our satellite truck. We have a satellite truck out in Anza Borrego. So like I said, we don't typically go outside, but we can. And last year we uh, worked with uh, the Boeing Community Fund of Southern California in a grant to deliver programs that were based on science in California state parks. And so we took this, this uh, satellite vehicle on a road show. Uh, it was in Anza Borrego, and it went up the canyon a little bit, and then into Cuyamaca Rancho State Park, which is up in the hills east of here, uh, near Julian. And we talked about three different science projects uh, over the course of three months with about 6,000 students um, over the course of those, those three months. And we talked about bighorn sheep, uh, Swainson's hawks, and the research they're doing there, and also reforestation in Cuyamaca. So we're using tech satellite technology out in the desert. We can take this pretty much anywhere. 
Um, we want it kind of stays in the desert because the way that our programs are operated, this is that park district's satellite truck, but we like to try to take it as many places as we can. And really the first one that we started with was uh, the first wireless kind of in the, the park program that we started with was in Crystal Cove. And so this is Jen and she's uh, Crystal Cove. Uh, we outfitted a John Deere Gator, which is your basic maintenance vehicle that you see in any park. And uh, we threw a video conferencing machine on it. Uh, the little bubble you see there in the lower left-hand corner, right-hand corner, is our underwater camera. So you can actually, uh, we can put the, the camera in the tide pools when the tide is low enough. And so we can actually show students what's happening in the tide pools at that moment. So. Um, we're going to go live to Jen right now, although this is probably not where she is. So we might just need to dial back into a different room. Let's see here. So our, um, you can just leave it right there for a sec. So our, um, technologically what we're doing is uh, we have a space on the K-12 high speed network. Um, they've got an MCU set up for us specifically for all of our port sites. So. Um, you know, I've talked a lot about what we do, state parks, but a lot of the other side is getting students, teachers, to, and school districts to participate. So what we've done, you know, we used to run around to all over California, and we'd bring little Polycom V500 units that somebody would give us, and they were like 1500 bucks, And we'd just go and we'd give it to them, and a school could use it for a semester. And uh, then we'd go take it, and we'd go back over there. And, but now we can't do that anymore. We're just too busy. And finally, schools and school districts are starting to come along on different technologies. And so we'll have one school district say, well, I'm employing a SIP-based, uh, you know, tablet-based video conferencing device. How do I get to you? Well, I, all of our machines don't necessarily take SIP. So I've got to find a way to have, you know, a place in space where everybody can get to us. So thanks to the K-12 high-speed network, they do all the bridging service for us. All of, our, all of our information travels over that. We're just basically hanging out in space. So when a teacher says, I want to sign up for your, um, your Gold Rush program from Columbia at uh, 10 o'clock, you know, basically we have our rangers standing in front of their green screen at 10 o'clock on that Tuesday, and they just have to get to us somehow. And we don't really care how they get to us anymore. We just want them to be able to get to this place in space. So. So those are all the sites that we kind of offer. You can go ahead and scroll down to Crystal Cove and we'll see if she got, she might've got dropped off there. All right, so she's still, she's still getting loaded up here. She probably went to happy hour. If you've ever been to Crystal Cove, has anybody been to Crystal Cove in Laguna Beach? They have a great, a great restaurant right on the beach and they do have, a, they do have this little thing. His, they have a historic district, which is, uh, we're just south of that when we're doing our video conferences. But uh, in the historic district, they have this great little restaurant. And the tradition in the historic district, which wouldn't have been historic in the 20s or 30s, but the, the tradition in the 20s or 30s was at 4 o'clock, they always raise this little martini flag. And everybody who lived in this little district then knew that it was time for, for a cocktail. So, Jen, were you out getting a cocktail? I said, are you, were you out getting a cocktail? I still barely hear you and I've got my end turned up all the way. So where's the mics for this? You sound like you're in a closet. It's not the cocktail. I might be. <laughs> we're working on it. Oh, okay. <laughs> Show us the restaurant. So Jen, can you hear me if I talk into the microphone? Yes, I can. All right, so we'll go with that. So this is Jen. That's her picture. That's her live. I don't know what you can see here. We've got maybe almost 10 people in the room. It's a big, dark, black box. It's very quiet and very comfortable. But Jen, I was just telling him about what we do and how we do it, and I was saying that you know, you were one of the first wireless applications that we uh, 
employed down at Crystal Cove. And so she's in this John Deere Gator. This is a picture of the back of it. And she's just basically talking to you off the back of it. It's got a generator. There's not much to it. Um, and uh, yeah, so we just drive this thing down to the beach and talk to students. Jen, how many days a week do you do programs? I'm doing programs Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays. And I do about four programs a day. So Jen, can you show us a little bit about how you do your programs? Okay. Well, obviously, first and foremost, without the equipment, without the vehicle, uh, I believe Brad may have shown you what it looks like, but um, here's a picture on my end. This is a John Deere Gator, a little four-wheel drive vehicle that we have equipped with all the things we need to do this program. This vehicle has been nicknamed the Educator, since we educate with it. <laughs> I love that name. And uh, this is myself and another, another interpreter here at Crystal Cove. This was, um, this was towards the beginning of the ports program. And then as you can see on the back of the Gator, we've got the equipment that we need to bring down here in order to do this program. Obviously, you know, we have a wireless uh, mesh network set up so that we can get connectivity down here on the beach, which is obviously what allows me to get down here next to the rocks and be able to, to talk to the kids live from the beach. So once we make a connection, um, the subject matter here obviously is about tide pools. So I spent uh, my 45 minutes to an hour discussing tide pool ecology. Um, so we get into all the intricacies of um, that and I use different things to deliver my program so I have my laptop that I use for delivering pictures and videos and whatnot I have a document camera as well that I use to show specimens so I'll show you a quick few specimens here this is always fun let's have them guess those okay yes what is this our former governor had a lot of those wow that's very good it's a good hint so this is the California blue mussel. For those of you who know the answer, of course. I think you all know what this is. Starfish. Uh, Jen, I, Jen, Jen, I heard, I heard starfish. Oh, starfish. No. Wrong, wrong. There is a better name for this animal these days. We're, we're getting away from calling them starfish, and therefore we are calling them what instead? Sea stars. I heard sea star. Star would be the answer. So we're getting away from calling them starfish because they're not fish, and we don't want children to be confused that they're similar because they're quite different. And and we are we're here at UCSD, which is the home of Scripps Institution of Oceanography. So you got to use you know yeah so. Very very good. Yeah. One of my favorite sea snails. So I just use the document camera to show specimens. So that's fun. Um, I also have an underwater camera on a good low tide day. Um, I can actually put this underwater camera up here into the tide pools for video footage. I can show you what some of that footage looks like because, of course, I have some pre-recorded. Uh, this is really, this is really the bread and butter. I think this is what really makes this this trip sort of a more virtual field trip is when you can add this component. Um, so here's some live video footage from. Well, technically live, it's pre-recorded. But here's some video footage from uh, our tide pools here at Crystal Cove. And this was taken using this underwater camera that I have. We're thinking about selling the, the tide pool footage at like, you know, the 499 screensaver little kind of deal. I don't know. But I don't think we can. <laughs> no, what's fun about this camera when I do have it out there, when I have it deployed, so to speak, um, I can control it from my, my laptop is the interface, and I can use my laptop to actually move the camera around. The camera's inside of a, a, a dome, and it has a capability of going 360 degrees in any direction, pan, tilt, zoom, all that stuff. So I can actually move the camera around inside the tight pool, uh, which is a lot of fun. So the technology uh, in this camera, I think, is pretty impressive when it's able to be used uh, at its best. So anyway, that's some of the pre-recorded footage that you're seeing there. All right. You guys want to ask Jen? Do you guys want to ask Jen any questions? No. 
No questions. Jen's so lonely. She could be at happy hour right now, but she's not. Here we go. We got a question, Jen. So how do you get the students to engage you? I mean, how do you prompt them for questions so that they feel comfortable enough to even ask questions like us? Absolutely. Well, I mean, you know, I, I, I will start out with doing the talking. I usually try to get the kids engaged with things that they're going to relate to. You know, first of all, I say, how many of you enjoy going to the beach? And of course, they're going to raise their hands. Now, you know, now they're physically starting to get involved. They're like, you know, I like to go to the beach. Okay, what sort of things do you like to do when you go to the beach? And most kids want to answer that question. So they start raising their hands and sharing with me activities they like to do. And then I break into, well, there's another fun activity you can do down here. It's called tide pooling. So let's get into that. And so I, I prompt them, I give them questions and let them answer. And then, of course, I give them the opportunity to ask questions throughout the program as well. Um, I always try to break things up with a little bit of humor because that makes everyone relax a little bit. And they're more likely to, uh, to interact as well. So, so I ask questions. I allow them to ask questions to keep it as interactive as possible. You also have to understand, I'm, I'm probably preaching to the choir here, but the students that we're engaging with are so used to this technology that they're going right to it. We very rarely do we have a student, a, a class where nobody's asking questions. The other key... I mean, even, the young, even the younger grades, even the, I, I've talked to kindergarten classes that are, they've already done this. <laughs> it's, pretty, it's pretty impressive. Another a big element that, of that, though, is having the students prepared for the video conference so that they know they're going to talk to the ranger about tide pools, about going to the beach, about uh, different classifications of animals and their adaptations and all that. So very rarely do we get students uh, that, that nobody will interact, for sure. Yeah, it's your old fogies, right? And and we we also I also think I also think it might be the hat. People, the kids always want to talk to the hat, so we always make sure that our that our interpreters are wearing their proper uniform. They do. Um, I was just thinking about you know just some of the things that, that I do to, to engage the kids. Obviously, this is live. This is outside. And on occasion, I, I get to take advantage of the things that are going on around me. You know, there's people running by, walking by. A lot of times they don't know they're on camera. I tell the kids that. They laugh. They think it's funny. Um, but just the other day, I was standing here doing a program. And oftentimes, my back is to the ocean, so I don't see what's really going on out there. But other people do. I noticed a group of people checking out something. So I turned around, looked, and there was a big pod of dolphins going by. We were in the middle of talking about something, but I said, hey, guys. Let's pause for a second. You want to see some dolphins? And I moved my camera. So that's a, another thing that's great about this uh, camera that I have here is that I can use it to move around, zoom in. You know, there's the pond of dolphins out there. They can see them jumping through the water. And it's really exciting. Uh, just reminds them that this really is live. This really is happening in real time. When you see these things happening and I can capture it, it makes it even better. Yep. Any other questions for Jen? Yeah. Um, are are you facilitating um, activities in the in the classroom that the students are doing with objects or or artifacts or things that relate to the beach environment? No, I mean we have our prep lessons that the students can do with their teachers uh, prior to the program, but I don't really. No, I can't say I'm doing that sort of thing. We don't we don't ship anything out. Uh, we don't require that the teachers have any materials. The, this program was built on ease of use, not only for our, Jen's a non-technical park employee. I mean, for her to be able to do this is amazing, right? And so when we built it too, we didn't want to have any barriers for use in the classroom. So we don't say, hey, you got to go buy this and make sure your kids can do this and make sure that, you know, you got this, this component. We want you to to, to hook up with us and talk to us. Now, that's not to say that Jen doesn't do engaging activities, like at the end of each program, Jen does a tide pool pledge, where the kids, it's a call and response, and it's all the things that she's just gone through and how they're gonna be a gentle giant when, they, when and if they come down to the beach. And so that, you know, there's lots of engaging activities. It's, it's akin to if you're just right at the park, but they're gonna do the same things. Um, you know, in our elephant seal program, we have students stand up and go, you know, fingertip to fingertip, and typically five seventh grade students is how long 
an elephant seal is. So we'll do those, those activities. But actually hands-on objects, we don't do that. Jen, uh, so are there other questions for Jen? She, she, she loves to talk, as you can tell. <laughs> I am an interpreter. That's right. So Jen, hang tight here. I'm going to just put you, you should put your I'm gonna mic. I'm going to do one more question. Oh, sure, sure. So uh, how are you getting this information out to all the teachers so that they know about the resource and how can perhaps some of our institutions help get the message out as well? And your institution is? California State University, San Bernardino. Sure. Well, I mean, we do things like this all the time for professional development, county office, district office, specific schools. Um, currently, we're just finishing a grant with uh, Los Angeles Unified School. Well, Los Angeles Unified School District was one of the recipients of the grant uh, stuff. We'd done 20, we're doing 600 teachers a year in LAUSD. Sorry, 600 teachers over three years, 200 teachers a year. Um, where, as a part of our grant, we went and did professional developments with them. We partnered with Q, Computer Using Educators, to do the professional development, buy equipment and stick it in their hands so they can go back and so, hey, you learned about this equipment, you learned what you can do with it, now hook up with Jen. So we do it a variety of different ways. Um, we, we, we're, we'll be at Q next week in, in Palm Springs to, to promote the program as well. And then we partner with people like CSU. Uh, CSU Monterey Bay students actually built that first uh, studio. CSU San Marcos, uh, we did a, a grant for, for technology with them and all of those teachers participated in our Enzo Borrego program. And, so we've got lots of different partnerships and things, but we're always looking for opportunities to speak with particularly K-12 teachers to get the word out. We're almost out of capacity though, like probably half of our programs, the ones that have been up and running and doing great stuff like Jen's, she'll be full this year. And we're not looking to do a million kids a year. We want to engage you know, one class period at a time so she can sit there with your 30 students and ask questions, make jokes, and show them all that stuff, and so they can interact, you know, as much as possible. But we'll always, we'll always go out and promote our wares. That's for sure. So yeah, so we do, we do this one class period at a time. Like I said, uh, we use that K-12 high-speed network bridge. At any point, there's you know eight different programs happening from around the state with eight different schools or school districts. Um, we work with about 100 different school districts. So who's from a school district? Anybody in this room? I didn't think so. Just, just one? OK. So, so we work with about 100 different school districts. Um, you know, and like I said, we used to care about, hey, you know, you've got to use the standards-based video conferencing equipment. And you know, we don't want you running it through a computer and the software, PVX software and all this stuff, and webcam. We used to kind of poo-poo that stuff, but now we're just like, hey, you can get to us. You know, the HSN has provided us with this public IP address and a CalREN address. However your technology is working, just find us. Here's your room. Here's your dialing information. Here's the, all the information for you to prepare your students, and we're there for you. So um, we just started um, targeting or, or using um, mobile technology in the classrooms as well. So teachers now with iPads or other tablets, there's um, some technology that's bridging the, the, you know, it doesn't have to be iChat or FaceTime. So Polycom's got an app that's free. They're a standards-based video conferencing software comp or company. They've got an app that's free and you, they, the teacher can download it and if the wireless network is just right in, in their, their school, they're, provide, they're, they're, they're getting to us zero cost, right? So, no, so they already have the, the, the iPad, the app is free, the wireless infrastructure is already there, and California State Parks is on the other side to provide a completely free program. So we're starting to pilot those kinds of things in the classroom. So I don't know what you're working on where you guys are, but it's really exciting to us because making it easier, more user-friendly, more available to, to teachers is, is really you know, it is our goal, so. Um, any questions for me? Yeah. Oh, we got the microphone. Uh, 
I've got two um, that are kind of unrelated to one another. One is I'm wondering whether or not you're considering, it's probably something for the, like far for the future, but considering a persistent installation that maybe the kids can manipulate themselves as opposed to having a little PTZ camera underwater sure. that the um, someone like Jen can sure. manipulate. You yeah. know, is there some way that you can yeah. put something like that so the kids can manipulate it? And second, what kind of um, post-event interaction do you have with teachers to ask them what went well, what didn't, what suggestions might you have for improvement to the program? Sure. Um, so your first question about having something that's student manipulated, absolutely. We, we want to we want to dive into all sorts of user-generated content and also you know, user-driven stuff. Um, and this program was being, the, the Crystal Cove program was being built in tandem. We were talking with, uh, again, CSU Monterey Bay at Point Lobos. They wanted to do an ROV, right? So an underwater ROV. So we'll, you know, um, we, we'll try anything. This, this program, you know, I'm a state employee, but I'm, I'm, I'm a weird state employee because I don't actually have a manual that I'm going from, right? Nobody said, you know, they didn't say go off the shelf and find out how to outfit a maintenance vehicle with a video conferencing system and talk to, to students. Um, so I, I'm kind of, we'll, we'll try anything. And uh, that's why I'm glad you mentioned that because we don't do anything by ourselves, right? We do it all with partners. The, you know, the, the technology that you're seeing out there, you know, was purchased through grants. The, the HSN is integral to keeping us online. Polycom, they'll give us high def video conferencing machines to test out, you know, or to use in, in, a, in a weird environment, all that stuff. So, so we're always looking for partners. So yeah, if you want to build something with us, call me, we'll do something. Um, and then your second question about evaluation, uh, we send out an evaluation for our teachers twice a year. Um, and we ask them which programs they participated in and you know, how did it go for you? And, and all that stuff. So we, we capture data from probably close to 400 teachers a year um, that, we, that participate in our programs. Um, and overwhelmingly, it's positive. And you'll see things like, the connection was kind of crappy, but I love this idea, right? And so we kind of take that back, and if we see a trend, we might go call that school district and say, hey, we've got your teachers that are participating in this, and is there, you've got a demand for it. You know, is there a way that we can increase your supply, bandwidth, the uh, network configuration, stuff like that? And so we do that in, in 100 school districts around the state, probably. So good questions. Thank you. Any other questions? All right. Um, so where are we going from here? So, so I mentioned the, the classroom application of it you know, iPads, that's mobile devices, that's where everybody's going. But we're doing the same thing, right? So we're, we're, we're keeping it weird, man. This is what we do. We don't want Jen to, to, to get bored standing on the beach and just get a suntan and she's, you know, just hanging out. So in fact, we're, we're kind of changing up Jen's program. There's a newly developed part of her park and we're gonna be moving it into this, it's called Morro Canyon, just down the way. We're still gonna have a beach component to it, but we're gonna focus the curriculum on STEM technology, STEM, STEM curriculum, right? So we're moving down the, the beach and so we're gonna take this and I'm not sure if we need a four wheel drive vehicle, so we might stick Jen on a Segway to take her up the canyon. Seriously, I mean, we. Yeah, see, uh, see I, I, I always wanted Jen to strap that underwater camera to the hull of a kayak and go out and around the tide pools, but she doesn't like the water, so we're not going to do that. Um, we first started this program, we had, a, we had a dive program, we actually had people going down and doing a live dive program, which is very labor intensive, it's very hard to do, it's not a scalable or a sustainable model, so we don't do that, that's where the underwater camera came in. But yeah, we might have Jen actually on a segue talking about, um, you know, science and, and technology and engineering and math and all of those fun things as it relates to this, to this economic, uh, ecologically sensitive canyon just south of where she is now. Um, this is, these three pictures are of Baldwin Hills. So um, this the view from Baldwin Hills and then this is kind of an aerial, Let's see if I can get in here. So at Baldwin Hills, what we're doing is we are gonna take that, that vehicle that you saw the picture of looking out over the city and we do it now from one location but we're building enough antennas where we can just 
take it to three different locations and show them different stuff. So what that entails for us is we've got this one camera on the back and it does all these wonderful things, but now I'm gonna get a dashboard cam so when we're driving down the, down the road, we can, uh, you know, we can do, talk to the students or answer questions while we're driving. I don't, know if, I don't know if we're allowed to do that, but we might, we're gonna try, so. Um, so are there any I mean, further questions for Jen? I'm gonna let Jen go, cause she's got, you know, she's got important things to do. Uh, happy hour at the beachcomber. <laughs> we always like to have we always like to have a theme for our programs. Happy hour seemed to be the theme for this program. I, I know they raised the martini flag. I heard I heard the trumpet, so <laughs> <laughs> Jen, what's your question? Well thanks Jen, thanks for your time. And uh, we'll see you sometime in the next couple of days for Q, I think. Sounds good. Nice meeting you all. Thank you. So like I said, um, we're keeping it weird. We're always looking for uh, partners in education, partners in crime, partners in technology and different stuff. We like to do weird things. Um, this program is, it's, it's, you know, it's not a billion dollar program. This is, this is your state parks providing really good interactive video conferences, experiences from parks into classrooms. Um, I think I failed to mention, but it's worth mentioning. We target, you know, uh, inner city, super rural, super urban, economically disadvantaged school districts. I'm not going out to, you know, to private schools and all these other things and promoting this. We're promoting this to the students that need it the most, the ones that, that need, and, need and deserve an experience with, with a state park interpreter to see resources. Um, and as I mentioned, you know, 50,000 kids last year, about 65% of those schools and school districts and students were from Title I schools. I mean, so we're, we're in LAUSD, San Diego, uh, you know, Oakland. We're in, we're in Modoc County, Imperial County. We're, we're talking to kids all over the place with this program. So if, uh, you know, you want to talk to me about getting involved or seeing more about what we do, I'd be happy to talk with you afterwards. But I think that's really all I have. And like I said, we're, we've been keeping it weird for a long time here. So thank you very much for your time, and let's go have happy hour. <laughs>